Indian Red Cyclone. ¡Aria! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to another episode of the It Gets Better Swear Podcast. I'm your host, Louis Beans, and I'm here with Margaret the Mike. What is going on, world? Chilling, chilling, Mark. What's good in the hood? Not much, man. Um, kind of went a little shopping Forbidden Planet yesterday. Uh, got myself the Super 7's Casey Jones. Is that brand new, or has he been out for a while? He's been out for a bit. Okay. So the, I, I was talking to the dude in uh, Forbidden. And he was saying, "Yeah, they're starting to get them in." He said, "Like the only ones that are, are getting harder to get are the turtles, because those are usually the popular ones to get picked up." But he said, "Like a lot of them are slowly coming into the store." So I was like, "Huh? Is that so? I, I might just pick them up there." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, so they have a bunch of them already. They have. Um, but I was like, what I'm gonna do is probably maybe once a month I'll probably grab one. So. Casey Jones is this month's, or well, last month's. So this month's I could get it. There you go. I probably get mine so next. What do they retail for at that store? Uh, fifty-four, which okay. is the regular price right now. And if you go to any website, they're about fifty-four dollars. So, um, yeah, it looks really cool. I actually like the way it looks. It looks like the old school figure of the Casey Jones. Um. And it has all the weapons and his 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 golf club his golf bag full of weapons and everything like that. So it looks really cool. I also found these uh, construct construct sets like they they are like they like Lego like cheap Legos and has, they made a below five below in Union Square. That's like a chain. Yeah, it's like that- uh, five dollars and low and below. So every, everything's like five dollars and lower. Um, and um, so I went in there and checked it out. Like have, they had like a massive amounts of candy and shit like that. So if you ever want to go to the movie theaters in Union Square, hit that place up first, grab your snacks, and then go. In. You didn't hear from okay. me, but they have like a dollar boxes of candy. So there you go. Well, me and movie theaters ain't friends, so I could just buy that and go home. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go home. They had a bunch of snacks, but I found these little Lego. Lego-ish, like bootleg Lego Ninja Turtle things that Raphael and Michelangelo. Michelangelo has like a little pizza parlor, and then Raphael has a little skateboard. Were they, they were like five bucks, so like two bucks. No, do they, they say like what, who? Do they say who made that? Uh, Snap and Switch. That's what they're called. Nickelodeon. Also oh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. eh, it was two bucks. I was like, eh, what's the worst gonna happen? This is a little Lego. It looks like a little Lego. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, eh, fuck it, right now. But um, I did see a bunch of things in Forbidden Planet. The Last Ronin uh, comic book came out, so they actually had the last one. I grabbed one for Tommy because he's been collecting the physical copies. Um, I I just been reading digital. I don't care anymore. It's too much. It takes too much space. Um, and then um, I saw the Thundercat stuff. I was I sent you the memoir, it fucking humongous, which got me scared of the gorilla that's coming into the turtle set. Because and he's that's... he's a he's a deluxe figure, so he's really big. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I hope he's not that big. <laughs> I mean, if don't don't you pay more money? Yeah, it is more money, but I I don't want him to be that tall. Like it, it it's, a, it's a big figure. So you get what you pay for, man. It's right. too bad. It's be a giant monkey. But they had all the other Thundercat stuff too. So we're looking to start the Super Seven uh, collection of the Thundercat figures. Uh, mm-hmm. For Ben Plans, your spot. They are fifty four to sixty dollars. Uh, that one more is seventy four ninety nine. So, if you want the big, because the the size of it is fucking humongous. But they have. A, you know uh, they had the. You know they had the regular Mamba, the small one. Yeah, they had a uh, series one and two okay. of the Super Seven figures as well. So he was part of series one, I think. Gotcha. So cool. they have all them. Um, yeah. So their prices are fifty to sixty dollars, depending on. The wave. I think series two. That's when they raise prices. So it's fifty five for those. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so yeah, they had a lot of bunch of new stuff, a bunch of wrestling figures. They actually have a whole wrestling section 
now they had uh, a lot of new marvel legends uh i know uh tenacious t and uh, a couple of my co-workers they collected the dc Mar multiverse so they had a lot of new lines of that it's just too much like i i can't no more. <laughs> i just stick with the turtles now i mean i saw also recently because i showed you the the figures that came out um i'm interested in the the newer aew figures because i saw I don't know if those were previews of, I think, Eddie Kingston, which is cool. Yeah. Um, is that his first wrestling figure? Yes, it is. So, like, that's a reason I kind of want to get that. Yeah. Um, the Thunder Rosa, which I think also as well, right? Yeah. She doesn't have a figure. That's her first figure, yeah. Uh, also, Powerhouse Hobbs was in that, that line. But also, the I, but I think he's the... the we call him the chase figure. No, he has was a the, chase. No, no, the 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 one I'm about to bring up. Oh, the, Ricky Stark. the, the Ricky Starks with the Darby Allen face paint. Yeah, that's the chase. The Darby Allen. That face is the one for that set, right? That's yeah. oh, that sucks. I wish it was his own figure. Damn yeah. it. He has his own <laughs> figure, but it's not, it then it's a regular Ricky Stark, and then they have that one as the chase. So it's basically that almost a completely different figure because yes. he comes off good shirt. And his, he's painted for that moment on the show. Yep. Which I think is really, 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 really cool. That's probably one of the, I, in my opinion, besides the Jericho with the champagne. Yeah. I think that's like the, 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 the mm, mm, I will give the, is it Phoenix? No, no, the Penta. I think the, the, the first cool. Penta was cool. The first Penta was really cool. I actually like Darby's, uh, Darby's figure too, the one with the coffin. The one with the casket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, but like, the, it's up there. It's I think up Ringside there. put them up for pre-order. All those. Okay, that's what it was. So they're all on pre-order, and I think that they do pre-order the Chase. They're a little like, more expensive though. Mm, got you. Run like fifty bucks, I think. Thirty to fifty, depending on the the how many are are there. So it was like one out of like five thousand, it'd probably be like thirty dollars. If it's one out of five hundred, then that would be like a hundred some dollars. Well, yeah, I'll make sure to check those out because yeah. I have dealt with Ringside, so. Yeah, they're great. They they, they do they they have never had uh, issues with them whatsoever. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can pre-order them now. Um, that whole set is set for pre-order now. Okay, cool. So I I am definitely gonna pre-order the Eddie Kingston. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at I was at Kingston because I might grab that for Josh, and um, I kind of want the FTR. I've seen them in game in uh, in Forbidden Planet, so I might pick up those two. Are they in the same set? Uh, yeah, They're just uh, single figures, and they come with the tag title. Okay, cool. So That's I might cool. actually pick up FTR. I haven't really been big on the AEW figures just because it's just another thing to collect that I just don't want to add on. But if there's certain people that I, I I'm a fan of, I, I probably would grab those figures. Mhm. Mm so like, um, I have. If there's a swerve, there's no way I'm not getting a swerve. Yeah, you are definitely gonna get a swerve. Um, if they do, if like yeah, yeah, depending on the the, the person and shit. They do a Keith Lee. They have to do a Keith Lee. You gotta yeah. get, you gotta buy a Keith Lee. Yeah, you gotta buy. A I Keith have Lee. a WWE Keith Lee. Does he? Is he in Elite? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they made an Elite. Yeah, Keith he has Lee. two. He has one with the blue and black, and he has one in the the white and pink. Or oh, the silver. Did and he pink. have the? Did he have the championship in any of them? Uh, no. But he has two elites. He has two elites and I think three basics. Okay, okay. So he he has a, a couple figures. They actually look really good in the WWE ones too. Like you can find them. They look. Really yeah, good. aren't they the same? Like, are they are they kind of like the same makers or something like that? Um, are they are they completely different? Because I swear they they don't look too dissimilar. So, so the elites to the, to the so they, they so AEW's figures are made to to kind of like interact with the elites. Uh, the person that does their figures, uh, Jeremy Prodauer, he used to do the Jack Pacific wrestling figures. So he used but that to do was before the old, they looked all cool like that. So he used to do the look, old WWF ones. He did the uh, w he was uh, nailed for the WWF classic wrestling figures, which were kind of what they're doing now with the elites. But that was the first ones they did. They have mm -hmm. the kind of the same details. They are doing a lot of the same things, but again, AEW is trying to do a little things different, I guess. With I like mean, the they all feel like shit like that. They all feel like 
post Marvel Legends figures, which is I thought that was the standard. Yeah. The articulation. That's that's the reason I like them. Yeah. And they actually have a ball like a ball like that you can move the ankles on the AEW figures. That's like a new that's a new a thing. New like, WWE figures don't have that whole like ball ankle thing. Like you could move it all around. You don't have to just move it back and forth. I guess maybe maybe soon they'll probably get that in there. Cause I guess I because I like them because I can see the advancement in the figure technology. Yeah. Because I know figures used to be a lot stiff. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the reason I like most of the newer ones, like the elites and beyond. Yeah. Because they're post stiff wrestling figures. Yeah. I know they're still basics. I get it. That's not for me. I get it. Yeah. Like if if someone if someone that's figures that's that's the only thing they have, then I'll grab the basic. But other than that, I I try to stay with the elites. Like Drew Gulak, he did not never got an elite. I got his basic. Okay. Wait. Tony Nice, I got his basic. He never got an elite. Don't make me sad. There's no elite Drew Gulak. No. Or um, or um, Tony Nice. Oh man! So I got both of those. The whole two hundred five. Well, Buddy got one, right? Buddy got a elite. Yeah, he has two elites okay. actually. I, okay. I actually, one of them I actually got signed. Nice, yeah. nice. But he has two. He has one with the Cruiserweight title and the one with the Messiah thing. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So he has two, All and right. then he has a couple of basics as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Speaking of, I see the. I guess I preview for some more basics. I see AJ. John Cena, almost uh, Johnny Gargano and El Metalik. Yeah, Grand Metalik. That's me. his last figure. Gotcha. Uh, those are all their last figures, except for almost. Get that AJ. money. <laughs> well, Cena. I'm sure they're gonna keep making yeah, Cena, Cena figures. <laughs> they Cena are gonna get more figures than anybody, but um, like Grand Metalik and and Johnny Gargano, those are their last ones. Okay. Okay, okay. Yo, Penta just super kicked um, Ty Conti. Oh, they had AAA, right? Yeah. Oh, why? Man. Why I feel good about that? I don't know. It, it, it looked it looked great. Because <laughs> it looked yeah. Because his <laughs> super kick is amazing. That's why. Yeah. Oh, shout out! To, well, we're talking about uh, simulated violence against uh, female combatants. To shout out to Bubba Ray Dudley for posting that that Trish Stratus yeah. <laughs> Dudley boys clip. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, they can't. Man, listen. What year was that? Was that in the 2000s? Uh, yeah, 2000, 2001. Okay, all right. All right. Man, I hardly remember it, but when I see the clip, it just brings back the flash. But oh man, I used to, I used to do that like every week. Yeah. Every week. Anyway, um, yeah, that's all I did. I, I picked okay. up the Casey Jones. That was the only thing I really picked up for myself. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, a lot of stuff coming up. Or is that trying to take my money? Uh, speak, speaking of trying to take money, we didn't really bring up the 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 upcoming uh, premium tier discussion. Yeah. Because I talked about like, oh yeah, it's happening. But I didn't get to ask you if you saw anything about this, the new service change that's going to come to PlayStation Plus, like I think soon, it starts this month. And if if you had any interest in what their new uh, systems were going to be, if it was just like ah, that's just how do you feel? Like does it? Do you think it's just? Hey man, they just trying to get more money out you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's the the whole trying to get more money out you because their PS Now service wasn't good. Okay. 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 Like I personally didn't care for it. I, I tried it out for a month and I didn't care for the PS now. But now they're trying to get you to do it with the membership. So like I think the premium one, like the the mo- the, the one that you get everything with, um, I think it's like one twenty a year now. Oh, uh, so it's they calling it all new PlayStation Plus launches in June. Yeah, and they said uh, well seven hundred plus games. The but the list of what is coming from each generation i don't think they have that yet yeah and also there's no it's not going to be a day one exclusive either so uh, yeah that's one thing i saw uh I, i'm trying to trying to see the 
the individual to oh here it is here it is so they have they have it broken up into essential i think the essential is the generic one yeah extra which is a shitty that kind of that's who thought that was a cool name <laughs> plus how do you say plus extra dog there's like EX why plus. don't you just say plus plus <laughs> yeah so plus alpha <laughs> yeah, but they they should um so let's let's just go in order essential is the regular one which i think is a terrible thing right yeah. like oh let's call it place this call it plus so then it's plus Save extra budget <laughs> yeah, exactly. so the benefit budget. of extra right yeah here's the benefits for extra provides uh same as essential as catalog of up to 400 of the most enjoyable ps4 and ps5 games what does it i thought that's the same so the so here is here it is between the the basic and the extra the benefit is the streaming yeah so you get the like you said which at, when you played it it wasn't a good service what you call it the, the first service PS9, had. yeah so it's a, essentially the extra gives you now onto your monthly um subscription yeah so it goes from the monthly is originals 9 9.99 gets bumped up to 14. um they have the other territories but that's not what we had so we doing american money yeah um so essentially you pay five dollars more for the streaming service which if that doesn't seem that bad but that's only if you're going to use it yeah like i don't I don't know if I would use that because that one literally only says four and five. It does not say three, two, and one. Yeah, the, so, I think the premium one. Hold on, hold on. on. Okay. We, 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 got you, we got you. So then at the bottom, they have plus premium with two asterisks next to it. I, what the, come on, man. Um, so this one is you get both of the stuff from above, right? Yeah. But then it says you you adds up to three hundred and forty additional games, with the Ascaris next to it, mind you. Scott Steiner is already Scott Steiner is already pissed off. Yeah, he's pissed off. He don't like that at all. They're not even creative with the names. He Wasn't this so... originally supposed to call Spartacus, and they they just like just cut the PS Plus. I listen. I wanted to get Spartacus. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea, but it does sound better than plus extra. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, so basically, you get three hundred forty additional. So that's where they get the three, the seven hundred plus, right? Yeah. It says PS3 games uh, available via cr- uh, cloud streaming. That's yeah. one. Uh, a catalog of beloved classic uh, games available in both streaming and download options, and that's that's only including ps1 ps2 and psp okay. so you cannot download ps3 games okay <laughs> which i the whole thing is coming back to that whole problem with the cell processor yeah like they still have they why is that real why have they still not figured out that that architecture come on man no come on man but anyway that's what it, it, it boils down to and then it says additionally offers cloud streaming access for everything that was previously stated right so yeah. then they they say the ps1 to psp and then it also you can stream the ps4 games if you want to right yeah. um that's about it so like oh oh and then there was this one thing that uh, i heard discussed on giant bomb this past week about they made a mandate for every company that has a game that is going to be priced 50 and up yeah i believe it is so it's like a, a full game price you have to provide a time trial a timed limited trial that's not bad and yeah that's the thing they're like it sounds like it's bad for them bad for game devs and good for for the players because yeah you you you're in the extra tier the highest tier like you kind of want to more ways to try out anything before you buy it. yeah 
and like you won't make the same mistake that like you did with Cyberpunk. And I think that's a part of what some of this is for too. Right? They just like staring too. at Cyberpunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys gotta like bring up a demo. And Especially you. Really, really, really <laughs> aimed at trying to lock down companies into like getting the games into the players' hands for them to make a yes or no buy decision. So yeah, yeah Cyberpunk, we're looking at you. You did this. I'm fine with like honestly, yeah. Oh wait, before we go further, okay. let me get the the price. The price for that one. And they don't have them listed here for the per the per year. Oh yes, they do. They do have it per year. Is the U.S. will go from like we said before nine for regular uh, extra is fourteen and premium is seventeen, and that's per month. So if you want the year, the year for the original is sixty. The year for extra is ninety nine. The year for premium is one twenty. Yeah. So that's what it goes up to. Um. So. Mm-hmm. Now you make me have to choose which one I want. So this is the thing with PlayStation Now, and this is my experience with PlayStation Now, and the reason why I don't like it. The trophy system sucks. Okay. Explain. And that would be the oh, only know. reason why I'll go back to old games is to get trophies. I could care less about playing a PS2 game now. Like, I'm not going to go back unless I'm really dying, eager to play it and stuff like that. I'm not. It's really rare for me to go back to a game unless it's, like, easily in my disposal to play. Mm-hmm. So, like, the trophy system is a, is a deal a deal breaker. If you, their trophies are not, are not going to work. Or you're gonna have issues with them. I'm, I'm pretty much not gonna like the service. And, gotcha. Um, that was one thing. Two, Game Pass has day ones, and that's a big thing of me paying the, the whole membership for Game Pass. Is that I got Halo day one, I got mm-hmm. Forza Horizon day one. Like their top games, their their games, their exclusive games are day one on Game Pass. And I think that's a bigger, that's more me like, oh, so I want to get that because, yeah, I could get those new games without having to buy a game. I have mm-hmm. not bought a game for Xbox since I bought my Xbox, since I got my Series X. I have not bought one game for the Xbox because I have Game Pass. Gotcha. Gotcha. But you have, is not gonna you have been game. able to have the Xbox experience, right? Yeah. No, I'm asking um, yeah, I was able I'm able to go on everything. I'm able to go online. I'm able to do everything and play the whole game. So that's mm-hmm. not a problem. So PlayStation mm-hmm. Now or whatever it's going to call now, now is premium, stuff like that. If I do the highest thing, right? Yes. I'm not going to get no day one exclusive titles unless they're going to line up doing it anyway if people don't pick up on these subscriptions. Like... What's the point of me getting this? Was to play older games? No, I don't like <coughs> my 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 like I I would be more ex- into it if not even all the big titles for PlayStation to come out directly on it, but give you some of them. <coughs> Maybe for like a week or two, or something like that, or a month. Like, hey, you can get this now for this month only, and stuff like that. Like kind of like how the 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 PlayStation Plus games work. You have one month to get this game. If you don't get it, you can't get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind that. But, like, it don't have to be every title, but some titles you should be able to just give it away just because, you know what, you want me to keep this membership? You got to give me something out of it. And the PS4, PS3, PS2 library is not going to do it for me. Gotcha. I want the gotcha. games. <laughs> That's just me. The, the perspective I have for it is I would do it because I like their library. Yeah. But, um,. I think I have a better way to curate and buy what I want for a lesser price and I get to keep the games. Yeah. So I'm trying to think back to um, just exactly what I would want to play, right? When it comes to PS3, the, the, the stuff on there is very few and far, far between. Yeah. Because the exclusives during that era, they there's a handful that you want right because yeah. that was main that was the 
big big era where the competition got fierce enough that xbox had majority of the same third party so when you go between the two there's like i don't really have a want for either one so if you were going to do a uh, game pass everything is there except for those playstation exclusives now how much do you want to play the playstation 3 exclusives that's that's like the only way that's the only reason you want to get into that last tier i feel because it's not in anything else yeah. it's not in this it's not in the second tier yeah extra does not give you playstation 3 games that's literally well i mean do you have an affinity for anything from one two and for one for one two and three basically not really but even on oh, i'm not talking about you oh, yeah. talking about you it's about in general and i know most people's problem with playstation was they didn't they didn't keep the backwards compatibility past two yeah like the first system it it didn't do it because it was the new one right the second yeah. one did it yeah. because they weren't trying to make a new architecture and screw things up and then the third one they messed it all up and then people were sad because yeah. the base system they eventually most of them now they're on the verge of death right yeah you have to keep getting them fixed or whatever or you're lucky and yours didn't burn out yet but uh, it's few and far between and they when they went to four they did not curate the system they said we don't care and then they implemented it now yeah right and then now started as kind of bleh yeah. i have not had my a chance recently i don't have a fives to to so i can't talk about the the ecosystem of what they have there now i don't know yeah right but how how easy is it for me to, to, to get access to this because with the way the system is me trying to find one do i want to find one because i don't uh the graphics aren't the, aren't the reason for me to get the system right the yeah. convenience of a lot of the things in it are the reason i should be getting this but if you're telling me that game pass is on pc it makes it a real, a real hard sell yeah like what 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 is in it for me and if this comes to pc that's then and only then will i go hmm right yeah it's because they have co made a commitment to i believe they've made a commitment to to, to some of the games having uh some way to play some of them online not all of them they, they have not said we're going to put all these games online but i think there are like certain marquee titles that will have online so if that's the case, I mean that's 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 nuts in its in in and of itself that they're providing that. Now, since you have access, Merc, does Xbox keep those servers for them old games online, or are they just done? If it, it depends on the okay. company. See, okay, that, it, it depends. It depends on uh, if EA or whatever system is running their online. If they have it still online, gotcha. like Ubisoft gotcha. just turned off a bunch of games online. Gotcha. So that's on gotcha. them more than on the actual Xbox or PlayStation. Okay, they don't okay. Control that part. Okay, okay. See, that's the thing yeah. is that it depends on what what is and isn't going to be there, because again, that I I say it's kind of a major thing, but you have to remember if you're trying to uh, go back and then also try to get the full experience from some other stuff that you're going back to. That includes the online. That includes anything that was an upgrade because especially from the ps3 slash psp era there were things that you can get only via online you yeah. know yeah and again as a part of trying to get the those experiences back if you try to do that via bootleg means you do open yourself up just saying yeah you have to go through some type of you got to get some stuff from some people you may not trust is what i'm trying to say yep so for me it's like if you're gonna come to PC and then you're gonna be like, all right, you can safely play these games. All right, I, I might look into it. Is what I'm saying. That's the only thing I might look into. But then again, they gonna have to change that price because I don't. The, I don't. There's no plus on PC. Yeah. You know what I mean? What, what am I? What am I gonna buy? I don't know. I don't know. What am I use it for? Yeah. Playing online on PC games is free, man. Come on, get out of yeah. here with that. So you ain't you ain't charging me to play online. I, that's one of the reasons I just gave up and did not renew. It was like, hmm, I bought this game for like five dollar. Yeah, this five dollar game 
they don't charge me sixty dollars a month to <laughs> to play this game online. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. Hey, you know that that's my main issue is it, I'm all for preservation and keeping the stuff around, but you gotta you you have to understand the climate. Yeah, and it's like yeah, the the, the pandemic messed up a lot of things because I'm sure they have plans. Because yeah. if I had a PS5 in my hands, I'd be talking different. I'm yeah. just saying. I would. I'm just saying. I I, so. I, 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 actually, I honestly, I, I think this whole thing of the making the the places now with the membership and everything like that is is kind. Of, I feel like they're they're forcing themselves to do it than actually wanting to do it. Because this mm. was the it wasn't. If you go back to the ending of PS4 and going to PS5 and how they talk about uh the past games they didn't fucking care yeah that guy i know what you're talking about too yeah i think he was like a president or something yeah he was he a, didn't, a, high, didn't give a, fuck. a high profile person in the company was like we don't care about this xbox so. was like we want you to play every generation mm-hmm. and that was their game plan i think the the and the, one of the big things for the xbox i think what their plan was going into making the xbox series x is making shit easy access mm-hmm. and i think mm-hmm. that was that was that was the marquee of it just to have everything easy access so game yeah. pass makes it well worth it because yes you get the brand new games you get shit um everyone's paying 60 dollars for the baseball game i've been paying baseball games for it. I, I bought the last two and then the fact that it's on game pass it saved me 60 dollars. i didn't buy it on ps5 I, i'm playing it on xbox so now you have more marquee people playing on xbox because it's free because if they have game pass it's done it's there and that's a brand new hot game um i'm more for those things like that to get me excited to to play it like you need to give me something more than the past games that are barely worked on the ps now and hopefully you fix it by the time that is a full service yes sir because one of my biggest things that i had issues with because i wanted to go all right so this is something the reason why i did the playstation now because i wanted to go back on the ratchet and clank games because Mm -hmm. they do not have a collection at all they never made a collection which i'm fucking very surprised that that game never got a fucking uh like a hd remaster collection at all like that's one game that she had it had it a long time ago Mm -hmm. and um i went back to play them and um like the trophy uh i think it was for uh um, the time one, I think it was the, the, it was the first one that was on the PS3. That one had trophies. And they um, and that trophies were all messed up on that in that game, and then also like, they didn't have every single game either. This is true. This so, is true. So like that's good. Depending on what games you're gonna give me, like I have to really look at the games you're giving me, and see if it's worth me paying another sixty dollars for a year. That's true. That's true. Because I don't pay sixty dollars. I pay forty dollars. I find that shit on CD keys, and that's what the membership has. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, and I racked up a couple of them. So right now I'm like I'm good for like three years. Mm-hmm. So like that that service has to be has to catch me. If not, I may pass on it. Same. Yeah, I get you. It's yeah. it's what you what you come in there for. I just hope that when I hear people start. Uh, actually using it this I guess it's this summer yeah I hope people say that it actually they they the online is stable the emulation is good and then that everything is smooth because then if it if it does happen to end up on PC uh, I'll look into it because yeah. again us as as a fan of the stuff that I would like to go back to yeah yeah, there's more stuff on on PlayStation that I would rather play. That's that's from those systems than on Xbox. Because then again, don't forget, Xbox doesn't go back that long. Yeah, they stop at Xbox. Yeah. So PlayStation One still has some stuff that I haven't I haven't got to touch. Because maybe, maybe I missed the last thing you said. You know said. Maybe it was too expensive at yeah. the time. Maybe I mean that was only import. There's a whole bunch of factors to a lot of games, right? Yeah. So. For for archivist perspective, like I'd I'd like to check it out, but it can't be stuff with a uh, really bad input lag as well. Like that would throw me off of it from trying it. Like yeah. if the input lag is too bad for anything that's streamed, I can't do it. Can't do it. Yep. So we'll see. Um, and I guess that's it. We'll we'll get into 
Oh, um, this year. before we get into the movie, I just want to bring up a little news with uh, so last within the last couple of weeks, uh, Discovery bought out Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. and they're pretty much cleaning house. So like every the Arrowverse is done. Like they're canceling everything. They're not making no. Um, there's no new TV or, mo- or shows getting done on TBS and TNT. AEW might have to find a new home. Uh, what else? Uh, and uh, WB Games might get sold. Yeah, somebody mentioned that they were trying to sell WB Games and then they stopped it. Uh, right now, they actually are back on the market for selling it, and they're selling their property. So they're willing to sell that people. Uh, different companies do the DC games, but they're selling off their game their game studios. So who the hell is gonna buy another round? Somebody please buy. It. Yeah. Somebody good. So buy that's that something round. that's coming up that in the news feeds, and I'm like, Microsoft. Wow, that's crazy. Please buy another round. Microsoft another round. That'd be a crazy pickup. I think get all the money for the MK game. There you go. Yeah, and if they could get the okay, then justice as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's the reason why we ain't getting an Injustice Three right now. We're getting a Mortal Kombat instead. Because I of the whole studio. WWE, WWE shit. Well, yeah, this not. See, yeah, that's the thing. I don't really know who else would make an uh, Injustice game. Yeah, I would think about it. Like, who would you? Who would I want to make one? But like, I don't know. I don't care. I think Neverwell did a good job with that one. I'm fine with Neverwell. Keep him doing that. But um, so there's a big announcement, a big a big chance that someone buys out Rocksteady. A big chance that someone will buy out like a lot of the companies that are looking at a lot of the game studios they have. So I'm, it's it's just something to bring up and something to really look at. Like seeing that they have uh, the Gotham Knights coming out very soon, so Suicide Squad, they still those projects are still in the go. But what happens to WB Games after this? That'd be crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, who buys it? Who doesn't? That's a big one to actually pick up if you want exclusive stuff. I think Capcom should buy it. Capcom? <laughs> Make uh, Capcom versus DC. Finally, right? People's go crying for that so long there you go there you go but um yeah we'll have more news on it i just wanted to bring it up because that's something that's going crazy aw might actually have to find a new home they'll they'll be fine the reason why they just the reason why because i think they're switching tnt and tbs uh into a like a a pretty much a sitcom rerun show uh channels Mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. not putting new content on it so they might not they might have to go to a different channel I wonder if they'll go to uh, next year. They have until next year. What is the people affiliated with Fight? Like, I wonder if they end up affiliated with them if they get if they cl- shut down That'd the channel. Cool, but you, with Fight, you gotta pay a premium to watch it. But it, like, isn't that like a, don't they have a network where you don't have to? Where you do it like as if you were paying for a channel. Um, Access Access has it, but not everyone has Access TV. Like, no, not all networks have. Not all cable have access. They're not to okay. Okay, they don't. They're not carried by everybody. Yeah. Understood. That's Understood. the only thing I like. I'll say with AW, they have a chance. They might have to move because of what they're doing. Discovery is like not not wanting to spend money, and they're actually trying to like cut down a lot of shit. So mm-hmm. they're trying to revamp the whole DC movie line. They're trying to revamp. They canceled everything that was uh, TV show wise on CW. They canceled everything on uh, of the Arrowverse shit. So that's all done. No more of that. They didn't finish out. They didn't finish out whatever uh, season they had. I think Flash is ending. Well, they are, they just canceling everything, and whoever is finished is finished. So they letting them finish out. So okay. Flash is finished. Like this is the last season of Flash. Gotcha. I, okay. I have no clue where they're at with Flash. I have. A, I, I'm probably like three three seasons back. So. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen That's it. Gonna be crazy. Maybe I'll just watch it. I have, but I have not seen the arrows. Well, the the revamped arrow stuff. But the, I guess that's it, right? Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> so they oh, trying well. to go more in the Marvel base with the movies and stuff. So let's see what they do. Uh, the Batman was a really good movie. So if you haven't watched it, it's on HBO Max now. 
mm-hmm. and so stuff like that. But yeah, they they changing a lot of shit. So that we're probably gonna get a lot more news on that within the next couple of weeks or so. I got you. Okay. They're they're cleaning the house. Good stuff. Um, now, our comic book theater movie of the week is from hell. Keep going. Okay. You got the rest. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it right now. Fuck. Um, it is a horror movie. It's considered a horror, horror mystery thriller. Yeah. Came out uh, 2001. Uh, release date. Where the hell is the release date? I just had it too. Uh, oh, here we go. No, I don't have it there either. Uh, sorry. Uh. It doesn't give me the release date. Oh, here it goes. Uh, release date is October 19th, 2001. Uh, it is rated R. And it is running time of two hours and two minutes. Yes, sir. Um, our stars are Johnny. Oh, uh, directed by the Huge Brothers. Albert and okay. Alan Huge. Mm-hmm. Um, they're known for Book of Eli. Um, and they did some other stuff, but... Book of Eli was a good one. Oh, and Menace to Society as producers. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. they did, um... Yeah, those are the ones they did. They did some music videos, too. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, uh writers... Brother's Got a Baby. That's Tupac. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Writers are Alan Moore and Terry Campbell. But uh, those are the graphic novel writers. Um, that they kind of had the movie writers as well, which is uh, Terry Hayes and Ralph. Um, I don't know, I can't even say his last name. Oh, that's Iglesias. There you go. Uh, there you go. Um, yeah, Ellen Moore did not like. Ellen Moore does not like anything that is done with his writing. At all. And that's that he did this. He said, came out around that this time. It was like. Stop using my stuff. Uh, he was saying that for a long time, but <laughs> this was one of the first. Gotcha. But like League of Sword and Gen- Gentlemen, V for Vendetta, uh, Watchmen, he hates every single one of those movies. Okay. Okay. But um, anyway, why does he keep letting people use his stuff? Does he have? Does he because not he have doesn't to say? Own the rights to it? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. he doesn't own the rights to it, but he wrote for it. So, um, yeah. So he just hates when people does his movies because they don't see the. I, I, I guess I guess like you write it in a certain way and you have a certain message you want with your writing and they don't come across when it comes to the movies. I guess I don't, I don't know, mm-hmm. but he just don't like no one doing his doing his stuff. Uh, we got top uh, the cast: uh, Johnny Depp, Heather Graham, uh, Ian Holm, Robbie Coltrane, Coltrane. I'm find those are the one you uh, Paul Rise as Dr. Farrell, yeah, Johnny Depp and Inspector Frederick Albert, uh, Heather Graham, Mary Kelly. She had two, two first names, uh, Sir William Gull as uh, Ian Holm, Robert Caltray as Sergeant Peter Goldie. Should I mention anyone else on this list? I wish they had the pictures of them in the movie because it makes it easier to identify them. <laughs> right? As, yeah, like I, they look completely different. Because their names, because the, the, I guess the inspector, Sir Charles Warren. Yeah. He was well, he was the main character, but his picture, he does not have the mutton chops and mustache, so he does not look like the character. Yes. Uh, so it's Ian chops. Richardson as Sir Charles Warren. Uh, Jason Fleming is Nutley the coachman, the nervous guy who was the al- nervous alcoholic. Yes. Uh, Katrin... Uh, is her name really Cartledge? Wow, Cartledge, yeah. As Dark Annie Chapman, uh, Terrence Harvey as Benjamin Ben Kidney, Susan Lynch as Liz Strive, Paul Rice as Dr. Farrell, um, Leslie Sharp as Kate Eddowes. See, I think these two, this lady Estelle Skornick as Ada, I think she was one of the other uh, prostitutes. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Magahe, I forget Officer Bolt, I don't remember. Me um, and let's see. 
Oh no, she was a main line. Uh, Annabelle Apsian as Polly Nichols. I think that's about it. I think Jonah Page is the this... one that got like um, got her brain picked. Oh uh, yeah, the 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 unfortunate uh, guinea pig. Yes, and Crook is her character. Yes, yes. Uh, so basically, this is tales of Jack the Ripper is what it boils down to because it, it in this movie Johnny Depp's character is a I guess they point him as a clairvoyant detective yeah. whereas and then this in this era which I believe is the 1800s I don't think it's 19 somethings I think they say it's 18 yeah it's in the 18th, 1880s is when Jack the Ripper was supposedly be have had been around um, so it's that time, that time period of Victorian era uh, London. So it's a period piece, right? And his character being clairvoyant, which is is interesting because the people believe him, right? They believe this man has these psychic powers. So, I mean, in the in the in universe, he does, yeah. right? He, he is able to drug himself up on this concoction they in the beginning he's they find him in an opium den passed out um but then later on you see him like mix together a bunch of stuff and then have his his basically his psychic trip in the bathtub so it's it's him getting blasted out of his mind essentially to access these these visions is so that's his character right he's yeah. he's kind of a he doesn't come across also as a degenerate but but because his character has to use the drugs to get the powers they call him at one point a degenerate you yeah. know what I mean? um so with that wrinkle we have him trying to solve these excessively violent and gruesome murders of prostitutes um so at one point in the movie right it's early on and this is the one of the things i think that it kind of confused me but it, now i think about it it doesn't is that jack the ripper exists as a person right as an entity already in this yeah. movie or they try to say that these are related they mention him in passing because the, there are already murders so when it gets down to this case this part of the city that he's in where he's trying to solve these these murders they they leave it open for the fact that the killer here may also be jack the ripper yes they don't necessarily say it is and then at so one of the things that i think might confuse people is that th this movie is like trying to say who jack the ripper is i my interpretation is it's not it's it's actually it ends up being not not well, it is sinister because it's, it's it's gruesome murders regardless. But it ends up to 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 the conclusion that I ended up with. I, I lost you. Hold up, okay. hold up, stop, stop. <laughs> Sorry. So the conclusion I ended up with, um, through the trials and tribulation of his character, is that the killer here is using Jack the Ripper as a cover. He's operating within the same timeline as Jack, as Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Because in history, you never find out who he is, right? Yeah. There's no clear, uh, we caught him, right? I thought, not that I know, right? Uh, to this day, they don't, they don't have, they don't know who he is, right? No, they never they, caught him. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I think that's my interpretation of what ends up happening is like yeah. they, you don't they don't tell you who he is but they show you things going on at the same time um yeah. and there was like always like a, a shit ton of like old copycats to you draw out that's what time was, yeah as well. yeah so yeah they yeah. never had and then yeah this they, they pretty much used it as like a scapegoat so like haha oh some they're doing a perfect scissors now they're doing perfect blading now and all that shit so yeah and then for for the journey they set you on of you find out very early on that there's a, the main plot thread is 
the prostitutes which know each other right and they they see things and one day there's a girl they see that who used to be a prostitute yeah and she got i guess she met a man Mm. and you know they they were all like oh we're happy took care of you you see her with her baby right and then they she comes and hangs out with her friend i guess to say hi and bye and whatnot she finds out this girl finds out that they are being harassed by a street gang yeah who's looking for payment and then you're introduced to that character which is basically the the street gang's enforcer yeah uh let's see if i can get his, his name uh the guy terrence harvey yeah and his name is benjamin ben kidney and you see him often and the, the movie does a really good job of kind of like w- when these murders happen he becomes a suspect but not to the not to the police that's the thing yeah a lot of what this movie does is kind of lets you go along for like the the ride with johnny depp to solve it yeah but it never explicitly paints out any of the people that you would suspect as the murderer and that's what i really like about it is there are moments where you see them doing things and you go oh that's evil yeah that's sick like with the 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 one character um dr farrell yeah when he basically destroys this this this, another prostitute and that's why i said to you to mark damn it looked like it was hard to be a hoe in this time Uh because if you were a prostitute they would just do whatever to you take you and so you're guinea pig yeah so dr dr farrell (laughs) not commander farrell dr farrell (laughs) dr farrell who's another character you see he's an upstanding you see he's a uh well looked upon you know he's he's high profile as a doctor in whatever field he's in but you see he has this barbaric treatment supposedly to cure like this woman's uh they paint her as like she's mentally unstable and and, and crazy and psychotic because he's they say she has thoughts of constant persecution and and uh anxiety and fear and with his treatment she'll be fine she'll be cured and that's what you get but here's the thing as you watch the movie and you go through you start to piece together that they were all connected the doctor benjamin like benjamin kidney and then further on as you as you're introduced to more characters you're introduced to uh, the doctor for the royal family and then you're induced to, you're introduced to i think she's like a duchess yeah the, the old lady that talks to him yes and tells him to clean up everything and you don't really know exactly what she means and then you find out what she meant later on was kill all the whores yeah. who gave the the prince syphilis basically like there's a there's a whole through line that goes through and it just gets more and more sinister as you start to uh put the pieces together so people that you end up thinking were just eh, throwaway characters turn out to be like oh yeah they were they were definitely just cogs in the greater scheme of this entire plot because the prince was loose is basically what it was so again it all spirals from that woman and the baby and the 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 whore and the baby and then they they trace it back to that what what do you even call that city's red light district i guess it is pretty much and then that group of women get saddled with well we have to teach you a lesson and this is what johnny does characters slowly discovers as he's going through he's like first they think it's just random murders right and then when it stacks up they start thinking oh no we gotta we gotta kill her oh no this there's a common thread here this killer is slitting their throats and dismembering them and taking pieces from them so first it was they just dismembered the lady they cut up her uh, so it was her throat the first because the first woman is different from the the rest of them they cut up her throat and then they i think they, they they cut off or mutilated her vagina right yeah but then when they get to the next one they did that but then they took pieces and then that's when the, that's when Johnny Depp was like, he started to think that it was be, it was for somebody collecting for like black market stuff. Yeah. But then, 
eventually it spirals and spirals and it seems that the thought is that he's doing it to punish them yeah and then that's what it ends up being is that the killer was sent by the royal family to punish the prostitutes and then then it's just crazy from there on because you just watching them and they they go into gruesome detail yes like you see these people get not everything but this movie earns its r rating is what i'm gonna say yes so it is it is a wild ride the entire time and you know what the movie kept my attention it's two hours and some it's two yes. hours and change a but job. it's i guess you could say it's a captivating movie like the acting in the movie is very good right yeah. but the, the actions could, could be better but it is what it is the only problem i had accent wise was the 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 irish lady yeah because that's a plot point and she didn't seem you couldn't you couldn't tell she was really irish except for her cartoonishly red hair which i don't yeah i, I don't get that because people's think, hair isn't that not uh, just that right Jackie said the same exact thing like you could, she's clearly died yeah, yeah and they and it didn't bother me until they made it a plot point of yeah. that one that one woman being oh yeah she's irish so she's probably like a spy and then again you hear so many little innocent things because there's a lot of casual not casual there's a lot of overt racism yeah towards the jews towards the irish towards i think they say like uh, i'm not sure if they mention oh the towards the native americans like specifically at when they're trying to pin down the crime yeah but you realize also that johnny depp's character is being thrown off the tr- thrown off the trail by the freemasons yeah. <laughs> and it all ties in together because then you find out the police chief is a freemason yeah because he yokes him up and 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 shakes the ring off of him at the towards the towards the, the conclusion of the movie yeah and it's just like oh man i didn't pay you didn't if you don't pay attention to the little pieces when it adds up to it you don't quite get the same impact because they were showing you the entire time who's connected and who's not and yeah. it's like wow okay and and then, you know what i'll give it i'll give it credit cool so what is going what are you gonna give this movie i'm gonna give it a four four i'm gonna give it a four so go right under pooty tank mm-hmm. i did not expect to like it and i ended up like really digging and, and, and also it's a different movie than what we have been watching a mm-hmm. lot mm-hmm. I think the last horror-ish movie we saw was demon Knight. No, the last horror movie we saw was the the shit with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a horror. That was a horror. Movie. That was like a body horror. That movie was gruesome. Yes, it was. Uh, virus, right? Virus. Yep. But that was more. That was more Jamie Lee Curtis type of horror. You know, scary. There's a monster here. This one is more of a psychological slash like slasher movie almost. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go for it as well. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Different, but I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. So right now, uh, pretty much our countdowns are exactly the same. Um, Pootie Sang number one from Hell number two, Unbreakable number three, Ghost World number four, Josie's n- Pussycats number five, Monkey Bones number six, and Next is number seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, for ne- <coughs> for next week, we do have Blade two. All right, that's not bad. I like Blade two. And um, for the next couple of weeks, we have Men in Black 2 after that, Road to Partition after that, Spider-Man, and then Daredevil. Okay, gotcha. Um, I have not seen Spider-Man since way back when, so. I, I always catch it, like, in the middle of the movie. I never, like, watched the full movie, like, in a, in a long time. I watch, I will catch it, like, right when, the, when he, she, like... Mary Jane is falling out the balcony or some shit. I the one, the one part of the movie, I think it's close to that part. Yeah. Is this the part where Green Goblin kills all those people and they turn into skeletons? Yeah, that was like right <laughs> after that scene. Yeah. That's my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. Just like what? <laughs> Damn. So yes. What's this comic- movie right? Yeah. So comic book theater will continue with Blade Two next week. Uh, last but not least, just because we were talking about comics and things like that, there was a loss and a, a big loss in the comic book world with uh, Neil mm-hmm. Adams passing away. Uh-huh. Uh, 80 years old. Neil Adams was a big, big 
um, a big, big um, person in the like sixties, seventies, or early eighty comics. Um, he created John Stewart, the Green Lantern. He created Raj Al Ghul. Um, he and Alan Moore is pretty much responsible to the shape of what Batman is now. Mm-hmm. Um, he had amazing runs on X Men. He had amazing runs on Green Lantern, Green Lantern, and the Green Arrow. He has that 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 book that about the drugs and stuff like that with Green Arrow. He he's the one that drew that book. Um, he has a tremendous amount of work done over the years, and he was such a cool dude too. He was very approachable, very nice. Will gladly uh, have a conversation with you if you came to his table. I had a couple of his original art um, in, in my house somewhere, and um, the sad to lose uh, a person. He was also very big in the artist rights and and helped him get the same pay as writers and things like that throughout the seventies and eighties. And he was a big advocate for that. So he's a yeah. big part of history. One thing I want to yeah. give him credit for was that he was the guy, one of the main people fighting for Simon and Schuster. I think it was. Yeah. To get the rights. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, he was a big, he, and he's the one person that will actually fight, help you with the fight and things like that. And a lot of people were, um, a lot of people actually showed their their love for him. And also like Kevin Smith, um, if you read, um, if you listen to Beyond, um, uh, Fat Man on Batman and Beyond, um, mm-hmm. they they had a, a whole cast about him and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, rest in peace, uh, New Adams. And again, like if you see Batman, that that that's those pointy ears, navy blue and gray, that's his art. That's what created that. He's the one that, that made that movement of that color suit and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the style of what Batman is now is between him and Alan Moore. So gotcha. He, he gotcha. did a lot, and then Green Lantern, John Stewart is probably one of the best Green Lanterns and big in the animated series. But he was a bigger. He was the the first black uh, Green Lantern character. Yeah. Yep. Um, and stuff like that. So he has a lot of memorable books. Uh, I, I recommend anyone going through his some of his comic book library. He has a ton of stuff that you may be like, oh shit, I remember that cover, or I remember this, I remember this story, I remember this cover. He is probably he probably has a hand in the cover or or the art in the book. So yeah, and he has a lot of good, a lot of good X Men stuff too. Okay. Do you know what his time period in X Men was? Uh, mid late uh, mid eighties. Okay. Uh, mid 80s late 80s okay i gotcha. think he was the artist on giant size i'm not sure though i'll tell you right now if he did the art which one you mean no no he was not in giant size he was like during the time before giant size x-men oh okay so Cyclops gotcha. still had like, the cap on his head and shit oh you mean the, the full costume Yes, but it, this was the the blue and yellow one, not the, the blue and yellow original original yes. one. So okay, yeah. So definitely check his stuff out. Check his his art and stuff like that. He has a lot of amazing work. So definitely check it out. And I met him a couple of times, and he was always extremely cool. So uh, mm-hmm. sad to lost, but again, he lived a long, a, a good life. He he was doing cons until like last year, I guess. Gotcha. Uh, year okay, cool or, stuff. Good stuff. Before twenty twenty, and, and something people also mentioned, he was doing like. I think readings and stuff on Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. Like a bunch of different things. So, yeah. Yeah. So, really big into the, the, the community. So, that's, yes. that's a really big loss. Yes. yes, Got yes. All right. Um, so, we wrap this up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to another episode of the It Gets Better Eyes Real podcast. Make sure you check us out anywhere and everywhere. Red Cyclone Inc. That is Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. That is YouTube. That is SoundCloud. That is Spotify. Uh, we also have a WordPress. Check us out. Where you at, Mert? Uh, follow me on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitch. All Mike. And always remember, 